morning and uh, welcome back to online anesthesia anesthesia update in zoom platform sponsored by akrulla and hosted by a1 logic and co-sponsored by anesthesia tv today we have two topics on recent advances in anesthesia the first lecture is recent advances in anesthesia anesthesia gadgets by my good old friend uh, dr trisha jokshi he is internationally well known faculty and that will be followed by a lecture on recent advances in anesthesia drugs by a well known international blogger and teacher dr unikrishnan from kerala today session is coordinated by dr sokrasad our team member over to you sir thank you dr sir good morning to everyone uh, welcome to the third uh, uh, edition of the, our anesthesia update and uh, true to the update we have two important topics one is on the gadgets and the other is the recent advancement of drugs and we have two eminent speakers well known speakers welcome sir both of you and the first speaker is going to be tushar sir he is very well known to everyone uh, post graduates as well as consultants for his infographics uh, he has done his md from vadodara and is practicing there for the past 32 years uh, he is very innovative uh, he is taking taking up lot of uh, urology and laparoscopy cases and uh, to that he has added opioid free anesthesia and tiva and his innovations have come out as uh, uh, two interesting uh, um, societies the, the isofa society and the tiva society he is the founder of tiva and ofa societies in face group facebook groups and uh, he also has some interesting other other than anesthesia like uh, uh, he has some uh, uh, origami teaching uh, he also has storytelling uh, uh, virtues so we are uh, excited to have you here sir and we have a lot of uh, expectation we are uh, uh, we'll move forward to your interesting gadget session sir welcome sir thank you sir i'm sharing my can you see my slides yes sir okay okay now i am very much uh, delighted to speak again on this platform uh, with my very good friend dr edward johnson and his team i'm dr tushar joksi has given by good introduction to my friend and uh, it is uh, this topic is still in my heart since last 10 years and i am very innovative and every day i am founding new and new inventions in anesthesia from basics to artificial intelligence to uh, metaverse to nowadays in chat gpt um, just uh, i'll i'll go on the second slide just a minute meanwhile this uh, presentation is with the picture format and more or uh, more or, uh, for this slide presentation you will see the uh, very good photographs of uh, the day to day uh, monitors vital parameters and uh, uh, they are run by the smartphone apps smartphone and uh, our anesthesia machines vaporizers tcit wa machines everything Move to my slides. Sir, so just click inside the PPT, sir. Once, anywhere, ha. Huh? Okay. Can you see my second slides? Yeah. Okay. Now, topic is breaking advance of gadgets in medical and uh, anesthesia practice. So, my disclaimer is that this presentation is for medical information and knowledge. It specifies that it helps in medical practice and the use of these innovative and newer gadget informations are subject to individual preference. Further, users are advised to seek professional medical assistance if they want to use. So, each and every gadgets are unique, and if you want to use it, then either go to internet or YouTube or in the Amazon's or whatever the way. But you have to first go through the details of that uh, gadgets. and then you can use it so our gadgets are classified as a pre operative gadgets medical gadgets simple medical gadgets anesthesia related gadgets post operative gadgets operation theater related gadgets it includes icu non icu backup whatever it may be so this presentation is more on pictures with short description of innovative gadgets so enjoy this lecture and i had given this lecture more or less more than 50 times in all over world we will start with the very basic parameters like blood pressure 
Now you see that blood pressure, we take it non-invasively, invasively, but these are the unique blood pressure, smallest instrument. Like first you can see the finger blood pressure monitor where you can put the fingers on the smartphone. You can put a finger like this. You can put on the, this type of the machines and the uh, blood pressure measurement comes in the smartphone or directly on the screen. And that type, wrist type blood pressure or watch type blood pressure instruments are available. And even cuffless blood pressure like free scan, you just put on the radial artery and then it can show. I have this type of the instrument like wireless blood pressure monitor. And you can use uh, on smartphone app through iHealth. iHealth came out with the so many vital, vital parameters individually. So these are the blood pressure instruments are available in the world since last 10 years. These are the thermometers, smartphone attached, medicine, thermodoc, infrared thermometer. You just attach a small things of thermodoc in your smartphone. Any type of smartphone, smartphone you can attach this type of the, you just put on the LED uh, light and you can have a, a thermo, thermometer type of the reading. And this attachment is coming in the only 3000 rupees. And this type of the attachment directly attached with the smartphone. It is called multifunctional smartphone infrared thermometer. It supports human body, water, food, environment. It is also used in the commercial purpose. And if you have a pediatric patients, and then you can go with the Kinsa type of the thermometer where you can have the smileys or you can directly put in the ear. There is a ear probe, then tells your temperature and offer really time guidance to what to do next, tracks, fever, symptoms, medication, and diagnosis. Then there are smart weighing scales are available. This is the only eye health uh, smart, uh, four smart weighing scales are available in the world with smartphone operated, which measures nine parameters of like weight, lean mass, body water, bone mass, muscle mass, body mass index, body fat, visceral fat rating, daily calorie intake. Just you put your legs on these machines and they will uh, measure your weight and height height by the laser, uh, this laser light, and then it immediately shows you on your smartphone everything. Then our basic parameters, pulse oximeter. We have seen the watch type of blood pressure instrument like wrist pulse oximeter, then ring pulse oximeters are all just like you put a ring over the patient's uh, any finger and it will show the uh, pulse oximeter. Then for the neonatal purpose, they are having uh, this type of the neonatal dis disposable pulse oxygen prometer. And even eye health came with the wireless pulse oximeter where you can have, I, I am having this pulse, of, uh, pulse oximeter since last eight years. It accurately measures SPO2. It is rechargeable and it costs you only 1.5 thousand rupees. It accurately measures SPO2, HP, HR and perfusion index with wireless pulse oximeter. This eye health company came out with the so many uh, vital parameters, very small size in through run through the smartphone. And these are the pulse oximeter, eye oximeter. You have an attachment directly, can you can attach with the your Android phone or iPhone and probe directly attached with the smartphone. It will show you in the result in the your smartphone. Then pulse oximeter, the near field communication. Our all the smartphones are having this type of the app in near field communication and pulse rate from HD pulse oximeter device through NFC interface, which will directly show in your smartphone and smartwatch. There are disposable SPO2 forehead sensors are also available. It is used for up to two days in the pediatric patients or in the ICU patient. And if you are having a weight anesthesia practice, then there is the tongue probe are also available for your packs. Then Biobit company came with the measures pulse oximeter and blood pressure uh, both the way in your watch and in the next successive slides i will tell you what type of the apple watch is coming in the market in last uh, within six months then maximum it sets pulse oximeter it shows you spo2 pulse rate platysmo index, then the respiratory rate everything and it is bluetooth wireless and which can connect and now I have seen that this pulse oximeter is connected with Wi-Fi and distant places. If your distance in tele anesthesia patients are wearing your near and ears are very wearing this type of the pulse oximeter, then you can see even 100 miles away from your that destination in your smartphone. And that Massimo came out with the new rainbow light sensor with oxygen reserve on index that measures the advanced warning of embedding desaturation. And if you are having a cardiac arrest patients at home or in the theater, then you have a nose clip, nose clip type of this uh, instrument. It tracks heart rate and respiratory rates in multi-trauma victims and it clips on the nose and immediately begins to monitor. It shows the respiratory movement. And if there is a no airflow, then it shows, does not show anything on the reading.
then uh, handheld pulse oximeter with NIBP. These are the very palm, like size of the palm, this ambulatory. These are the smallest instruments are available in the world. Then contact 08 digital blood pressure monitor with SpO2. This type of the pulse oximeter with blood pressure I have, I'm using since last seven years. Then Barton's handheld pulse oximeter with capnograph. This is also very unique, available in 50,000 rupees only in the world. And these are the two probes are coming out from the one wire and it shows both the way, pulse oximeter and capnograph. It is a very handy one. Then Smith's Medical came with the handheld pulse oximeter with capnograph, with separate sensor for capno check. And believe me, this is the Massimo Emma handheld ETCO to monitor, which is the world's smallest size of two inch only capnography machine. It is costing around one to 1.5 lakhs rupees. And you, it is only just like one finger size. And it is used for the short and long term monitoring of adults, pediatrics, and infants. So, what else you required in our uh, gadgets? And there are some changes in the smartphone stethoscope. These are the stethoscope approved by uh, this uh, uh, Food and Drug Administration USA. It is Wisecope. It's smartphone enabled. It directly shows all the phonations on the your smart, this uh, smart, uh, stethoscope. And uh, this type of a think link, just plug and play. Smallest small power. These are only small, uh, this type of the uh, chest piece. And you just put in your uh, headphone or in your smartphone. Then Ikuro, the first smart electronic stethoscope. Even Ecoscope main came with the integrated electronic stethoscope with electrocardiogram. When you put over the chest, then it shows the trial lead ECG. Then smartphone ECG machines, these are like uh, this world's first ECG machine, which delivers hospital-based quality ECG. Cardio Defender, these are the 21st century halt monitor. It shows all these readings by your wearing the smartwatch. Then this machine like Alive Core, available in 7,000 rupees in Amazon. It is called a Caradia mobile EKG, which if you put in your uh, Android phone or in your smartphone uh, uh, behind this uh, smartphone, then it shows, you just put your in palm like this and it shows the ECG. Then Mobmon, one lakh rupees, smartphone based ECG of 12 lead and with pulse oximeter. Just put in the uh, your smartphone, it starts with the taking the ECG. Then believe me, this type of the watch is in the pipeline by Apple and Samsung near future multi-para monitor with smartphone. What it shows? It shows SpO2, it shows uh, heart rate, it shows everything, emergency call, ETCO2, glucose monitoring, NIBP, patient ID, temperature, everything. What else you require? And believe me, there is a, some uh, census uh, released by the uh, Apple watch that Apple company that this Apple watch will replace our ICU monitor in near future. Just your ICU patients and your uh, OT patients have to wear this watch. And you can distantly with your smartphone, with your distance uh, tele anesthesia practice, you can see all the parameters in your distance screen by Wi-Fi, by uh, Metaverse or whatever. And these are the smart defibrillator. This is Indiegogo that was developed in Australia. These are the smartphone based uh, automatic Automated external defibrillator. When there is a, you carry with this type of the smartphone, then there is a victimized patients in a, whatever the trauma patients in your market mall or in your roads. And then it will, it will is easily come out from the, uh, behind this uh, smartphone. And first it activates the emergency call from that country. And it immediately sensors the, this uh, uh, activates and guides you okay, what to be uh, given, how much, uh, uh, shocks to be given. Then these are the Bluetooth wireless heart starts. It works on presenting uh, uh, ventricular fibrillation and determines the initial therapy. Either you have to give shock first or CPR first. And there are implantable T fibrillators are available in the world. And the uh, uh, Harvard Medical University is the first in the world who has put implanted the implant defibrillator. If you are having a cardiac arrest, then it will pop up your uh, heart signals from inside your body. And there is a hardly uh, chances of cardiac arrest. So these are the new invention in the defibrillators. And these are the rescue pump, uh, this rescue pump and rescue POD. It delivers optimal chest compressions. And this, this type of the machines are available. And these are the trick spike. It speeds up the process and leaves less room. These are the new CPR inventions in the world. Then there are smart glucometer. This category of the glucometers are going in the world very prominently. 
these are the thermodoc like glucose monitoring system which wirelessly works with the smartphone i have shown you the thermometers that like that glucodoc available in 2000 5000 rupees with you attach on the smartphone it will show you the directly on the smartphone this is the type of the attachments are available on the amazon and you can put you have to put the strips like then these are the glucovise non invasive blood glucose concentration to be measured at the capillary level you do not have to prick yourself just glucose level extracted by the non invasive technique and this is dario glucose meter glucometer you have to uh, put an app in this and dario is a warm color gadgets which includes much more than a glucometer there is a lensing device inside this so these are the new gadgets for the and these are the sugar beads which are even i have put this sugar beads for the one month this is continuous glucose monitoring and it available in 3000 rupees or 10000 rupees if you want to wear this type of the watch then it directly shows your blood glucose monitoring every 15 minutes for at least one week two week or four weeks and you can you uh, monitor your glucose then novio sense these are the tier glucose level you just flexible oculars insert glucose measurement these are this type of the device measures minute changes in the glucose level in the tiers from your tiers it will show your uh, this uh, glucose and these are the smart kit smart contact lens glucose monitoring developed by google and novartis company you just wear this uh, lens in your eyes and it will continuously showing your glucose monitoring like continuous glucose monitor every 5 or 10 minutes this type of the spirometers are available now it flawlessly connects your smartphone and you can uh, blow in this this uh, mouthpiece and you can have this results on your smartphone and these are the non invasive blood analyte monitors for measurement of the blood hemoglobin non invasive it is developed by orsense and these i this type of the uh, uh, red 47 it uh, available uh, measures spo2 pulse rate perfusion index and everything and all type of the uh, hemoglobin parameters pronto pulse oximeter it also measures oxygen pulse rate plethysma in sphb titocare titocare is for the tele anesthesia practice and for the routine pre anesthetic checkup for telemedicine this device includes regular stethoscope thermometer otoscope built in camera and tongue depressor so for a patient for young uh, for a uh, pre anesthetic uh, checkup it is a best instrument available uh, this available around 12000 rupees in the world and this is a very much uh, going in the western countries like in israel then in european countries then these are the vital patch if your patients are in the icu or in your recovery room so band like disposable vital signs monitor shows result on smartphone it measures single ecg lead ecg heart rate rr interval respiratory rate skin temperature fall detection and body temperature even sweat sensors are also they can measure everything now sweat sensor are going in the third generation group and they can measures even distantly where you have this sweat sensor includes a wifi and bluetooth connections also and they you can measure in for your elderly patients at home or whatever it may be everything by your parameters these are the smart vein finders not routine vein finders you can have this type of the google lens you can wear this ultrasound ir glass for your vein puncture and you can have a 2.5 lakh rupees of this type of instruments where you can have very micro vessels also you can detect it out there is a tap at blood collection system nearly painless blood collections by wearing this single use device and this will not break your vein this is valino vascular new needle free blood uh, practice new version of needle free blood draw device patients already on peripheral iv do not have to go undergo additional vein puncture i have not seen but uh, this is a very good uh, invention in the collection of the blood and these are the biodegradable polymer coating that can plug an injection site called chitosan blood loss after injection is uh, prevented and our vein flown invention is not also dark, uh, going behind there are so many safety injections and vein flowns are available in the world like these are the peripheral iv catheter available in wide range of from 16 to 26 c it reduces the risk of exposure to blood uh, patient's blood there it are two iv port and you can use like a vein flown then this is iv cannula with integrated three way you see this is when you uh, remove this uh, stillet then it forms a umbrella like this safety needle so you incidentally or accidentally cannot prick the needle in your uh, body there are the safety iv cannula where you can just put a vein flown in your body and the stillet comes in the back side so it's are very safety vein flowns are invented in the world 
and these are the mahurkar smart syringe these smart syringe are invented by our scientist in india from pune dr mahurkar and these are the not possible to reuse see this needle comes in the plunger only so needle holder is locked to the plunger after use the entire syringe is interlocked so there is no use of reuse of this syringes and these are the adhesive bandages uh, adhesive bandages are available as a airtight waterproof bandages come with the anticoagulant antibiotic antifungal and whatever it releases a multi compound therapeutic substance onto the sterile pad so this type of the uh, uh, this bandage are very much popular in the our india and western part of the country and for this our anesthesia purpose anti snore devices sometimes in tiva and mactiva this type of the china uh, machines are available means the side of the hold up are available in amazon it cost only in the 580 rupees patient survey support these are the smallest cpaps available in the world anti snore devices and these are the anti snore chips uh, support strap belt these are of home use for and sometimes it may use me for the os patient and these are the clips are available it gently opens the nostril to increase the air flow built in magnet provides magnet therapy and it's non invasive these are the snore clips only 85 rupees on amazon and flipkart then some endoscopy mouth guard and mask for the innovations like ovation fiber optic intubation airway from this you can have a endoscope insertion then vp and endos mask these are the application for fiber optic intubation bronchoscopy gastroscopy and transesophageal echocardiography your this uh, endoscope goes from this uh, mask then you can have a ippr or assisted ventilation or you can put from here the oxygen also and these are the oxiga there are uh, you know see these two prongs on the nasal and these are from so it is a unique oxygen nasal port oxygenating mouth guard from from this mouth guard i am using this mouth guard since last 10 years and i am very happy with my gastroenterology practice it delivers oxygen from both the mouth and nose and these are penis mouth guard for ercp anesthesia which has got a capnography as well as oxygen att attachments and it uh, fits on the patient's mouth so our ercp and gastroscopy procedure becomes very easy now endoscopy supraglottic devices are also available like lma gastro airway and gastro laryngeal tube these are the two tubes now available in india around 22000 rupees and uh, i am using this type of the gastro lma and for a fiber optic uh, ercp uh, <clears throat> means gastroscopic ercp patient for a half an hour to one hour and my patients now very safe so different nasal and atrial tube these type of the naso flow nariso pharyngeal airway tubes are available it allows for the direct oxygen delivery and there is an, an optional respiratory indicator where you can measures the uh, capnography also and these are the endoflex endotracheal tube where you do not have to put a stilets in this tube it can uh, uh, it can with flexible with uh, retroflex or flex so this type of the tubes are available now this is hyaluronic microcrop sub glottic suction adult endotracheal tube that is a separate pod than cuff pressure there is a separate pod for the suctioning so you do not have to detach this from your circuit and uh, suction it there is a sub glottic separate lumen and you can suction from the your trachea and these are the nasal tube and endotracheal tube your gent ventilation invented by chinese people wei nasal jet tube and wei jet endotracheal tube for the jet ventilation delivers up to 70 liters per liter and these are the 3m new durapur advanced surgical tape for the keeping tubes in place this new product suggests to skin various tubes and itself when the surgical surface is made this is a very good invention by the 3m and our different magil forceps are available like rodinia tilki mercury you see this is a catch in this you can catch this your magil uh, magil tube and you can insert in your trachea with easier and safer nasal tracheal intubation and our routine mal laryngoscope are now available as a macinto switch style style laryngoscope so there is no uh, accidental detachment of this laryngoscope from uh, blade to from your handle and in pediatric anesthesia centered anesthesia marks for pediatric patient which available in raspberry then pineapple whatever the uh, uh, this centered mark uh, Sent mass you want then suppose your child wants a rose scented or pineapple or this blueberry whatever the this type of the mask are available it improves patient tolerance and reduces patient's 
children's pre anxiety and these are the delivers uh, these are type of the mask nasal masks are available designed to optimize comfort minimize the anxiety light when and stays out of the way so it is just a nose mask these are the masks available in the western part of the world. and you know this pediatric anesthesia said sideline monitor it assists the maintaining the proper depth of the anesthesia in the pediatric patient and this is now one of the very very well established uh, save the dragon user fire breath there is a save beds are available their children are playing in the screen and immediately they have to wear a helmet here and that from one one part of the helmet the save fluorine is going on and they play from your helmet this screen with the dragon and immediately they will start they blow the uh, air in this uh, helmet and the save will be inhaled and from that so actually video game is actually played by the child on a screen attached to the front of the wheel hospital bed to inhale exhaling the save in mask it's a very good invention in our pediatric anesthesia where child will by playing they will go in the anesthesia and these are the smart uh, video laryngoscope i have invented this video laryngoscope through smartphone just 7 years back now the cost of this video laryngoscope is only 700 rupees only rather than 2 lakhs rupees our old uh, this uh, new video laryngoscope this uh, android boroscopes are available 300 to 500 rupees on the amazon this smartphone will uh, this smartphone will act as a monitor as well as light source you directly attach on the apple phone or smartphone android phone and it and you can connect with your uh, this uh, uh, this uh, laryngoscope and it acts like uh, video laryngoscope like this this is a blade and this is my i card uh, visiting card and i can see in my smartphone and this is the first laryngoscope built in suction available in scope for the video laryngoscope and these are the disposable video laryngoscope now there are so many players having in india also it is available in 3000 to 5000 rupees for single use by so many companies and this is the first robotic tracheal intubation in the uh, human which was invented in 2012 now it is going very much advanced through artificial intelligence even in metaverse i can intubate my patient from here from vadodara to even kanyakumari with this type of the instrument and this is anapeno grad which measures automatically cup pressures you know this cup pressure is very important in our anesthesia practice if your patient is having a high cup pressures then there are so many problems in you cannot recognize in your post operative period and these are the rapid positioning intubate stylet it dynamic there is intubation with control tip which flex and retroflex this is a very good instrument for intubations and these are the smart usg machines now available our india has not recognized this but in western part of the countries this type of the attachment smallest attachments are available this butter i butterfly iq is very common in all the card you just put a software download software in smartphone and you have an attachment with your iphone or smartphone and you just go with the 3.5 hertz with those type of philips siemens and so many company with came with the smallest size of the smartphone usg machine and now our regional anesthesia is also far in anesthesia equip company came with the neuropol ecogenic needle plexus needle which with the latest ultrasound reflection technology then if you are alone to give your regional anesthesia or blocks then single anesthesiologist administer regional blocks with the safira safer injection for regional anesthesia then even in your uh, block in your uh, this workshops of uh, regional anesthesia any block workshop then spinal simulators are also available that will show how to place needles for blocks at estris then epidural space locator machines are available like acuro then equip that will show you the how much uh, depth for epidural space is there exactly you can so there is failure when you put your spinal needle or epidural needle in your any type of the patient when you are giving regional anesthesia this is compuflow able to provide epidural anesthesia system means it presses that the needle the pressure and it provides a precise and continuous measurement of the uh, pressure at the tip of the syringe both helping to guide the anesthesiologist and this is the smallest size of the uh, this epiduroscopes are available from apixi and it is 120 doing 20 degree viewing angle it is hardly 1.5 mm 1.5 mm it is Uh, much used by the all pain specialist physicians 
and now our anesthesia trolleys also got transformation by not having electric electrical connections like our oxygen concentrator directly attached here and this uh, trolley will be run its oxygen by only from the air with the help of oxygen concentrator these are very good in, uh, invention for the distant part of the uh, means very uh, remote side of the countries like african countries remote part of the anesthesia theaters like that and these are the depth monitor invented like cupcon conox and uh, this uh, uh, opioid monitors like nol nociception level these are the depth anesthesia monitor for the tci tiva and uh, uh, there are so many inventions are going on the bis monitoring also these are the anesthesia workstation with agent management features see this machine world's most advanced anesthesia workstation costing 1 crore rupees which was invented by one of the major players in the world that only india is having three machines in the uh, this and there are more than 50 machines in the world and it goes whether from these machines you know these are the machines invented by this company with the wifi internet and bluetooth and this uh, even to think that to kill the patient is very much difficult with this and it cost around 1 crore rupees i have seen these machines in my uh, vadodara is very uh, fortunate to have this type of the machines and this machine is a very advanced machine they have all the para monitor uh, monitors with uh, tci tiva machines and every monitors with there is no gas like uh, the flow meters and that everything feather touch then my dream of uh, only future artificial intelligence vaporizers this is in the pipeline where all these vaporizers are uh, formed in one vaporizer with all the tanks like desflurane isoflur isoflurane and sulfurane in one vaporizer you can choose from your uh, only one. one vaporizer will be mounted in the anesthesia machines which i have shown to all part of the india recently and <clears throat> this is the universal tci tiva pump for all, all your drugs out there just recently one one week before in koimtur we have inaugurated this uh, we have uh, means released this pump from elevel acromed company and these are the all the drugs are softwares are in this only one pump this universal tci tiva pump can be used for the all drugs like you name all induction agents from fentanyl to remifentanyl to midazolam to even dexmedetomidine ketamine propofol everything you can use single pump for every drug and this is my future anesthesia workstation which only have a one like we are in the pipeline of see i have shown you 1 crore rupees of machines and in this machines in 2030 i dream that there is a switch on switch of anesthesia where you have only one button asleep or awake when your patient is going for anesthesia you just put this machines on the asleep then patient goes in the anesthesia then your when the surgery is over you want to wake up the and uh, this patient then put on the machine on the awake mode then your patient will be in uh, totally awake and if in between if you want to relax then you can have a kiosk of this coffee or juice or tea so this machine is in my dream and believe me this i dreamt this 10 years before and in 10 years of the span anesthesia inventions in gadgets and are going so much tremendous changes with artificial intelligence metaverse and now chat gpt and dali too that everything is under now not dream but it reality and patient came with the two surgical glows in a one one glows like inner glow is bright green colored and while the exterior one is natural skin color if the exterior glow is damaged by scalping then for example the green from the glow below suddenly pops up so it's a very safety measure for the our Uh, H1N1, HIV, HBCG positive uh, viruses. When we are operating all this, uh, and this is the smallest size of the ventilator invented by Bivel BD. That even smaller than A4 size. The beauty is that it used from the street to stretcher to air to Nora to OT to ICU, and it supports invasive, non-invasive, and transplant ventilator. And this is integrated with the pulse oximeter. I have seen these machines and very small, just. just uh, a4 size below a4 size of the paper and if you are in ot and your surgeon is telling shouting that increase the light height, adjust the ot table height like that then you have a smart i wifi ot gadgets with your smart remote switches this type of the uh, switches you can put in your ot then you can connect your smartphone and 
if he says that can increase the intensity of the light then you can order your smartphone like alexa siri or google or bixby whatever just increase the light head down head low like that so these are the reality now and for disinfectant of this your ot the light targets naturally occurring molecules called porphyrins which uh, sterilize the ot very prominently and these type of the digital plasters are now invented device meant to be embedded in the ordinary plaster and this contains siri uh, sensium silicon chip powered by the small battery and these are the wet witty gel is now available like our uh, this uh, nacra and, and, and cyano acrylate gel that stops bleeding in seconds it is very much uh, helpful in when there is a high high bleeding in the operative site china people came with the uh, so many infusion pump in a one pipeline like four or six infusion pump these are available in the world drug release in sticky patchy pain relief the novel polymer technology of ibuprofen and this is i called it is a cold pottery it's a bio weld it's a unique device to seal surgical incision using cold plasma gas it ionizes particle plasma have been shown to weld human tissue and it is a very uh, see we have seen our uh, electric pottery so this pottery is now available and it uh, seals the uh, edges of the incision and riba our uh, uh, stretcher is also invented by world's first robot that can lift up the human in arms it is called robot for interactive body accessory riba is the first robot that can lift up or set down the real human from a bed or wheelchair if this robot is in your hospital and suppose your hospital's bed is in the third floor and your ot is in the fifth floor just you give the order through your smartphone this robot comes through lift and they will catch your patients and they will uh, send it uh, this uh, patient to your ot and they will uh, take away from ot to recovery room also very safely and this type of the beds are also available these are the wireless beds and from smartphone wirelessly artificial intelligence they can run they have everything they have monitors they have connected the beds will stream parameters every parameters can be this bed can you can like this uh, riba you can order your this bed from your ground floor to any floor of your uh, uh, ot from your hospitals and they can come in your way and you can transfer this patient from this uh, bed and by even moving this in transit you can monitor your patient with vital parameters in your smartphone whether you are in the 12th floor or first floor and for your uh, this uh, electric underpants are uh, available for your uh, this uh, uh, bed source and it activates muscle and increase the circulation in the area and effectively elevates bed source thereby saving life this is very good invention for the icu patients here we have a lot of bed source when their patients are ventilator we can see with uh, uh, so many good icu care so if this type of the pants are available half pants then patients are have, uh, safely protected with the bed source and your these are the somato and portable mri this mri and uh, this uh, ct scan both can be built to your patients near by their cot so patient do not have to transfer to ct unit or mri unit this can then come to your uh, hospital with they are very small like our uh, anesthesia trolley and you can plug in your uh, this uh, any bedside and you can have this ct scan and mri even mri compatible infusion pumps are invented even bio lung machines are invented to remove the co2 in your uh, any copd patients in post operative also hemolung respiratory patient it saves patient from sedation intubation ventilator associated pneumonia other complications these are all machines are available in the world closed loop anesthesia delivery system this is invented by our indian scientist and anesthesiologist from uh, pgi chandigarh and this instruments this closed loop anesthesia there are so many infusion pumps are attached in the uh, periphery and you have uh, this type of the anesthesia depth monitor in between there is a computer and computer will decide with this two of this peripheral things that how much anesthesia to be given to your patient so it acts as a closed loop anesthesia delivery system it's a new invention in anesthesia even medical variables are available in the metaverse and these 
medical metaverse are very much helpful in our pre anesthesia uh, checkup suppose my anesthetist friends are asking my assistant from distant ot from any part of the india then i wear the holo lens and i can assist him by avatar in that theater and it is not far behind it is called as a transcontinental anesthesia or distance tele anesthesia practice it's a reality now you just wear the meta watch meta watch or haptic gloves or you can have meta cap or meta t-shirts so metaverse is also in coming in the big way in the gaz as a gadgets for anesthesia pre anesthesia checkup education of the sister, uh, patient then virtual anesthesia practice then in seminars digital NS, uh, for digit as acting as a digital metaverse anesthesiologist what else you required see these are the you can create your own metaverse theater by having all this the basic instinct is you have to wear the holo lens or this uh, uh, microsoft uh, lens and you can work as a avatar with your virtual as a virtual as anesthesia assistant in your uh, another anesthesiologist friends ot so in the take home message anesthesia is a very developing field in the gadgets and they are divided in advanced monitoring system use of ultrasound technology to guide region see in ultrasound also artificial intelligence if you are not well versed in your ultrasound uh, uh, this uh, um, knowledge so what ultrasound says by artificial intelligence you show me the anatomical structure i will identify whether there is a small nerves small muscles and i will inject my this nerves and i will block it you show me the by artificial intelligence so there is no need of going in the even now for workshops and everything i don't know the sonography machines details in my regional anesthesia practice so artificial intelligence and metaverse comes in the way remote anesthesia delivery system so now there is no like workshops or will go away within 10 year, 10 years and everything will be remotely workshop will be like one anesthetist from join from kashmir i will join from vadodara doctor uh, uh, edward will join from kanyakumari so everybody will gathered in one as a remote anesthesia virtual theater and they will work as a workshop leaders then new drug delivery systems are also coming in a, new drugs are invented from since nine, last 10 years like ramimizolam then ciprofol then everything is a dizitols and heptiva so anesthesia see 200 years before there is a if you give 100 anesthesia then the the death rate was 10 per 100 anesthesia 100 anesthesia given in 200 years hardly 0.1 0.001 and in coming 10 years it is very very difficult to kill the patient with this type of the newer gadgets and believe me anesthesia is becoming more safer than any part of the world of any medical specialty thank you wonderful lecture sir really after hearing a lecture uh, i feel i am way back in time sir <laughs> uh, so many gadgets uh, right from uh, uh, simple uh, uh, thermometers finger pulse oximeters uh, bp apparatus stethoscopes so many things have really changed a lot sir and we are at the have, i have worked for 7 uh, years to prepare this oh my uh, god yeah i have collected more than 2000 gadgets and for uh -huh. medical gadgets only but for anesthesia i had put this my slide presentation is more than 500 uh, presentations means uh, each slide but i have selected only 60 for time limit <laughs> really we are lucky today to have uh, seen all thank this thank you i am very it's not for you we, we won't know more than what is a maximum monitor sir so much yeah. is there we have not we don't know all these things sir <laughs> thank you very much sir Uh, and 40 percent are instruments are available in the world now that, that is even more interesting sir uh, sometimes and you won't believe that, that i have uh, i don't know i want to India. tell one thing that uh, yesterday only i was uh, telling with my icu physician that now all monitors will go away from the icu and only patient have to wear watch only and it will be distantly measured by ic workforce see it becomes a very much uh, safe for this you can centrally monitor you can monitor from your home you can monitor from a distant part of the world and like our cctv camera you can watch your cctv hospital camera from your even distant 1000 miles away from your home or hospital
So the technology is uh, going very far away now. Thank you. Thank you for the thank lecture. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I am very delighted to be here. Vast knowledge this and a long duration. It's not take one to years. <laughs> taken seven years to prepare this, and you've given this in a forty-five minute uh, yeah, lecture. Yeah, we are really you. happy to hear this, sir. And I am very happy you, for Edward Mike, very good buddy friend, and very. I'm proud of you, Doctor Edward. Three salutes to you for your continuous this uh, webinars and everything. Really mind blowing. Thank Nobody you. can do in India. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, to share, Bhattu sir has asked whether we can give anesthesia at the same time in three OTs with these new gadgets. <laughs> See, I I'll tell you, you can monitor your patient. Our anesthesia attendance is required. See, all these gadgets are there, but our tactile and dexterity based based labors will not be go away. So they cannot take the decision. We can monitor the patient. Suppose if you want to extubate the patient, then you have to give the orders. So that's the way. Artificial intelligence is there, no doubt it. But for that also, you have to feed something. Eh? So this is the only branch where our anesthesiologist presence are. So always I'm telling in my artificial intelligence and metaverse lectures also. Also, artificial intelligence will not take our jobs. We have to be present. No doubt. You can run three theaters by one anesthesiologist with his, all these gadgets and your anesthesia technician. That's the way. I run two theaters simultaneously with my anesthesia uh, assistant. No doubt it. Very safely. Really, on one side, it, it looks like we have all these gadgets may replace us, but uh, human mind and human effort yeah, human can, mind never be be can never be replaced. Can never be replaced. Totally different. We are. I have, not told, I have not our, told about the chat GPT because chat GPT, so many people don't know about this, but chat GPT is a new invention after metaverse also, after inter artificial intelligence. You name it, it can draw. You name it, it can see. Whatever the, suppose this lecture, if I want to prepare myself for seven years, then chat GPT will prepare within seven seconds only. That is the beauty of chat GPT now. Human mind is going extraordinary with this artificial intelligence chat GPT. So thank you for all these things. And uh, is there any question that I am ready to answer? Uh, we'll look into the chat box and if there is anything I'll okay, ask sir. you again. Okay, okay. Okay. Gadgets are very new to our viewers and uh, for also for us. Nah, nah, I, will, I will give you this link, uh, whole gadgets uh, side presentation to you personally and I'll put in your our group also. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, the next presentation is on uh, newer drugs by Unikrishan, sir. He is the head of neuroanesthesia in Chitradharnal uh, Medical College. Uh, I, am I, think not, every... I am not the head of anesthesia. <laughs> I am an okay. additional professor. Additional professor, yes, sir. Uh, uh, sir is uh, well known with his uh, anesthesia blog as a medical layman. And uh, he, has, uh, he is an excellent teacher. We are waiting to hear from you, sir. Welcome, sir. Is the slide visible? Yes, sir. It's visible, yeah. sir. So thank you for the kind introduction. I owe my thanks also to Edward Johnson, sir, and the online anesthesia platform for giving me this opportunity. So I am Unni Krishnan uh, from uh, Sri Institute for Medical Science and Technology, Trivandrum. I am working there in the neuroanesthesia department. So straight to the topic. Uh, before that, uh, since all these are newer drugs, just like Tushar Chokhsa, sir, I also need to show the disclaimer. This content is only intended as a teaching material for students. And uh, please refer other sources for clinical practice. So when uh, whenever we hear about uh, such a topic, new drugs in anesthesia, the, the, the straight question which will come to our mind are, which are the drugs? But a better way to uh, face the topic is uh, when you include in the background why we need such drugs. So that will give a, a clear perspective of uh, the importance of the new drugs and the pitfalls. Are the existing drugs perfect? That is the first question. See, everyone knows the most commonly used the induction agent is propofol. 
but purple four has uh, uh, that issue that is hypotension. So uh, the etomidate and ketamine have a remarkable capacity for supporting BP in compromise the patient, which uh, the purple four won't. However, other shortcomings make these drugs inferior to purple four. And uh, we also know that respiration is less affected by etomidate, ketamine, and uh, dexmedetomidine than by purple four. So they have they, there are lacunas in the uh, profile of the existing drugs. And another uh, thought is, can benzodiazepines uh, be used as anesthetics? So there has been a lot of uh, trials in the past, uh, quite some time back, where they tried benzodiazepines as anesthetics also for induction and maintenance. But the one major problem they found was a high variability in drug response and uh, drug requirement. So one patient needs very less drug to get anesthetized. Another patient needs a lot of amounts uh, for getting a proper plane of anesthesia. So this individual variability was a major hurdle in using benzodiazepines as an anesthetic. And uh, a relatively slow onset of action. So the uh, you can imagine how uh, an anesthesia on that will come if you give a larger dose of pentasolol in place of propofol. So it's not that fast, and the long-lasting residual effect. So many times, uh, uh, what they needed was they needed to bring in plumacenil to prevent resedation. So uh, that was a major issue. And uh, again, even for anxiety, now uh, psychiatrists uh, give benzodiazepines with a uh, hesitation. That is because of the dependency. The another problem is uh, tolerance and tachyphylaxis when you uh, use these agents for quite some time. So uh, benzodiazepine as an anesthetic, uh, the image is uh, somewhat tarnished. So. But uh, uh, there have been, uh, uh, in, uh, there is a slight uh, uh, comeback for benzodiazepine group uh, into the group of anesthetics because they are, uh, the recent research is now slightly focusing into benzodiazepines with uh, affinity for alpha 2 receptors and alpha 5 receptors. But uh, no major molecule has come in this regard. So I'm not mentioning about uh, and those molecules here. And uh, uh, in this era, whenever uh, the researchers go for a new molecule development, uh, they first see what are the uh, recent expectations from the anesthesiologists and from the patients and from uh, the hospitals. Uh, so that has to be considered before developing any uh, new drugs. So in this era, one major uh, finding is that uh, hypertension is more than what we think. It is a very deleterious phenomenon uh, during the perioperative peri period. Um, so a mean arterial pressure less than 80 millimeters of mercury for more than 10 minutes. That itself is a, a, a can be said as a threshold where an organ injury uh, mechanism starts. So uh, you should always uh, try to prevent hypotension, be it comes because of blood loss or um, be it from um, give, uh, when you administration of a large dose of proper food. So don't take it lightly. Uh, every time try to correct it with the vasopressors because that has an impact on patient outcome. Another uh, concern is postoperative delirium. It is a very vague term which uh, most of the um, practitioners may not give that importance. Uh, so, but it should be actually uh, uh, dealt in a very systematic way, and it is actually a perioperative neurocognitive disorder, uh, postoperative delirium. So, it is distressing for the patients. It is distressing. It is challenging for the staff, and it is associated with impaired outcomes and uh, also add to the cost. So, uh, always develop molecules which. Uh, counter or at least don't have a, a promoting effect on uh, postoperative delirium and other psychomimetic effects. That is one thing. Then, as everyone knows, acceleration of drug, or drug effect onset and offset. Offset is very much uh, pertinent because uh, we are moving to an era of ERAS, um, enhanced recovery after anesthesia. 
so in in such a context the offset time should be very fast otherwise you cannot uh, uh, practice daycare anesthesia and rest uh, and uh, a clinician can easily understand what is the difficulty if the uh, drug onset time is longer so probably we all like uh, one one fact one major factor because of uh, our love towards propofol is it's faster onset uh, it has a very good offset uh, profile also but uh, these two are, these are very basic requirements before developing a molecule and uh, post operative nausea and vomiting as you know um, nausea and vomiting is a very distressing feeling along especially along with pain when the patient is recovering from anesthesia propofol uh, is definitely an antiemetic and even midazolam also has some antiemetic properties dexmedetomidine has antiemetic properties uh, whereas the volatiles and uh, uh, other agents are just the opposite so that is a uh, that is another feature desired of a new molecule uh, and the ability to support swift and atraumatic placement of a supraglottic airway just like i mentioned uh, uh, eras is the path through which uh, we have to go move in the future so uh, in such a scenario replacing the endotracheal tube which requires relaxation and other long acting drug administration with the supraglottic airway is uh, very important and uh, many of the uh, surgeries and uh, anesthesia require only a sda insertion so uh, like propofol, the new molecule also should be able to support a HGA placement. Uh, for example, if you consider thiopentone, it doesn't have any airway reflex suppressing properties, whereas propofol has an excellent uh, uh, ad added advantage in that area. So new drugs should be like that. So these are the expectations uh, which the anesthesi anesthesiologists and patients keep in, a, in this new modern era. So coming back to the previous question, uh, how is our uh, existing drugs performing? See, all the main drugs, be it propofol or thiopentol or etomidate or ketamine or dexmetamidine, they all have pitfalls. But these are few names which didn't become a failure. So uh, in this table, uh, I have mentioned on the right side the uh, major side effects with uh, these drugs, but uh, those which underlined they are the main cause of uh, commercial failure or uh, concern. In this case, it is not failure, but uh, if with a commercial perspective, what is mostly disliked of these agents, the, those things which I have uh, underlined. For example, com coming to etomidate, the major effect any anesthesiologist resident will tell first is its adrenocortical suppression. And uh, when you use in practice, you can see and uh, the patient can experience the very unpleasant, inconvenient uh, muscle movements, excitatory muscle movements. But uh, from a commercial perspective, the most uh, uh, negative point about the tumidate is uh, post-operative nausea and vomiting. Like that, uh, propofol, even though it produces so much hypotension, uh, one very much disliked aspect is the pain on injection. Ketamine, it is hallucination. Uh, Dexmetomidine, it's bradycardia and hypotension. And uh, thiopentone was a god in anesthesia for a long time. But uh, this is uh, taken from a BJ article. Thiopentone has been removed from the WHO model list of essential medicines and is no longer available in the USA after physician and pharmaceutical industry rejection of its use in judicial killing. In Europe and elsewhere, thiopental remains available and locally popular, but repeated accidental syringe swaps for antibiotic or local anesthetic and clinician unfamiliarity have driven obstetric anesthesiologists towards proper food. So that is the fate awaiting uh, thiopental also. So, so you can see that in the if you see the legislating lineup, there are a lot of lacunae. And uh, we were not uh, just couch potatoes. Uh, we were trying to uh, develop a lot of drugs, the anesthesia researchers, but uh, many of them failed. Whenever you tell about drugs, the failure stories are also important, but because it uh, gives you a lot of, la um, lot of uh, uh, directions for moving forward. So uh, this steroids, whether steroids can be used as an anesthetic, so that question 
may not have uh, come very popular, especially uh, maybe post 90s. But before 90s, there was intense research on using steroids as uh, anesthetics. Th those are known as neurosteroids, neuro neurologically active steroids. So uh, pregnenolone, uh, pregnenolone uh, was, was uh, used uh, uh, as an initial step, but the major problem it posed was the articarial rashes. So it became a failure because of that. And uh, quite some time back, we had uh, heard a lot about force proper food. But why, did, why it didn't come up? Because it was causing significant perineal pain. When a drug causes such issues, it is very di difficult to popularize it, especially when you don't have any remedies to counter such issues. And uh, uh, the ABP 700 or an atomic derivative, I have put a star because it is it was a failure, but it is it is not a failure because it has come uh, back in a different form. So previously, the problem was the carrier used to deliver that drug was uh, the Cremaforel. So this caused a lot of anaphylaxis, which were deadly. So that's why uh, from 1970 to 84, it was in uh, use, trying to establish its position. But uh, because of this major side effect, it failed. And uh, uh, can we use volatile agents for sedation? No, uh, because there is a lot of need for scavenging, then that can arise equipment issues. Then sedation with uh, sevoflurane may cause diabetes insipidus if it is for a prolonged duration. Then uh, sometime back, we had also heard about the sedasis, uh, semi-autonomous drug delivery system, but it also never came up because it lost out to in-person care. So, uh, this is the background in which we ask the question, which are the newer drugs uh, that uh, expect its entry into the front stage in our anesthesia practice. So I'll be uh, dealing only with the molecules which has come up with proper studies or uh, which uh, captured some space in major journals. Uh, other prospective molecules, it's not that useful because we have already seen a long list of drugs which failed. So many of these things may not come into practice. So I'm not uh, dealing with those drugs. Uh, so I'll be dealing with uh, the ciprofol, remimazolam, alfaxalone, Alphaxalone um, is a neurosteroid, esketamine, um, etifoxin, and uh, um, ABP 700. Sorry, uh, there was a one mistake. ABP 700 uh, is an intermediate analog. It was not a neuroactive steroid. I just uh, sorry for the mistake. It was a problem with the sli uh, slide entry. So uh, another thing which I would recommend is, uh, especially the residents, uh, whenever you are discussing a drug, you should follow a order. That is, we should tell uh, about the uh, introduction and uh, the group uh, details of the drug first. Second, you should uh, discuss about the uses. And thirdly, you should tell about chemical characteristics, how the uh, drug is presented in the commercial market. Uh, mechanism of action and then sh uh, should come next then route of administration and dosing and then you should uh, tell about what the body does to the drug that is absorption distribution metabolism and excretion that is pharmacokinetics then you should tell about what the drug does to the body pharmacodynamics cns CVS, GIT, renal, metabolic, musculoskeletal, etc. All system you should describe. But uh, in today's discussion, we, we won't be discussing this much detailed pharmacokinetics or pharmacodynamics because they are new drugs and uh, such data are not available. Uh, and, sorry. Uh, pending uh, more pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic studies. After that, only such details will come in uh, such purpose journals and we should then discuss about side effects and then about special points so i'll be dealing each drug in this order coming to ciprofol so first you should introduce the drug it is a structural analog of propofol 
and it is an intravenous anesthetic agent. That should be your introduction. Then you should uh, tell about the uses. So uh, the US FDA and European Medical Agency are the major um, authorities uh, which uh, gives approval for uh, certain use of uh, certain drugs in clinical practice. And uh, nowadays, there's a there's a end what to say a entry of the uh, Chinese scenario also into clinical practice because post COVID, uh, if you see journals, a lot of Chinese articles are um, taking its place in major journals, be it the JAMA or uh, BJ or Anesthesia Analysis. Yeah. Everywhere, uh, China uh, is trying to um, present its voice. So uh, the National Medical Products uh, Administration, that is the organization in China which gives approval for these drugs. So um, they have given, uh, I feel like uh, it is very easy to get uh, permission compared to other FDA or EMA in China. Because uh, whenever you see a, a drug without any approval from FDA or EMA, but you can see the approval from China. So in case of ciprofol also it is same. It is approved in China for sedation and induction of anesthesia. So that is the second, uh, uh, that should be the second heading. Then you should come about chemical characteristics and presentation. Uh, when you compare ciprofol with propofol, there is not a major different, uh, in the, uh, difference in the presentation. So uh, that is one point which uh, the, Ciprofol dislikers use as an argument. So there is still continued use of lipid formulation, but definitely with lesser lipid exposure uh, with the one percentage emulsion. And uh, under the same conditions and the, at the same concentration, Ciprofol has a lower free drug concentration in the acute phase. This leads to a lesser incidence of pain on injection. This is the major highlight of Ciprofol. It has comparatively less pain on injection compared with the proper food. Also, less solvent is required. I mean, to the next setting, mechanism of action is same, but it has stronger affinity to the GABA A receptor. So that may translate into a more potent drug. And uh, rules of administration and dosing, there is no definite uh, uh, <coughs> range which we can tell actually because it is not FT or EMA approved. Uh, but from studies, you can detect certain values. Uh, so of course, the administration is IV and the dose uh, described in one article is 0 0.15 uh, to 0 0.9 milligram per kg. Uh, and another article, uh, it is 0 0.4 to 0 0.9 mg per kg. So as expected, it is uh, these are from Chinese articles. And in the pharmacokinetics uh, section, uh, you should tell about absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion, ADME. So coming to uh, ciprofol, we can't have, uh, we can present, we can't present uh, this detailed data here because we don't have uh, uh, information. And uh, this is uh, four times, ciprofol is four to five times more potent. That means less dose requirement. And when you are giving a less dose, the respiratory system and cardiovascular system side effects are less. So that is uh, about pharma for pharmacokinetics. Coming to pharmacodynamics, say if you compare side by side, uh, you can see that ciprofol has a slightly longer duration of action with a less rapid recovery compared to propofol. That was the uh, picture we got from the available studies. And side effects. Uh, it is, uh, you can see in the literature, the response is mixed. So some articles say it has a similar adverse hemodynamic impact to that of propofol, but some other articles say the uh, severe side effects are less and with a less severe respiratory depression and definitely significantly less pain on injection. So finally, coming to the special points, so ciprofol is currently undergoing late stage clinical trials for procedural sedation and trial registries indicate studies in general anesthesia also. But however, none are yet reported. Given that, so one sort of argument is this. Given that pain on injection of propofol may be attenuated by co-administration of lidocaine, the case for ciprofol remains unproved. So 
only time will tell whether it becomes a champion uh, just like prop to fold or it is uh, just uh, another uh, forgotten drug whether it will become a forgotten drug just like the agents which we which i uh, discussed in the initial part of the presentation so that only time will tell so the major uh, summary is definitely less pain on injection and a few articles uh, describe lesser impact on cvs and respiration coming to the second drug remimazolam it is a short acting benzodiazepine and it is an intravenous anesthetic and sedative agent. That should be the introduction. And uh, uses in US and China, it is approved for procedural sedation. And uh, in Japan and South Korea, it is approved for anesthesia. Chemical characteristics and presentation. So the left side picture is of Remima Solum and the uh, right side is Mida Solum. So you can uh, see an additional branch in the uh, Remima Solum figure. It is an additional resistor linkage. That is the difference between uh, Remima Solum and uh, Mida Solum. The Remima Solum undergoes hydrolysis by carboxyl esterase 1. Uh, hydrolysis by carboxyl esterase 1 to an inactive metabolite. Mida Solum is converted to the active metabolite alpha 1 hydroxy Mida Solum. So uh, this byproduct of metazola has strong, still strong affinity for the GABA A receptor. That is the uh, root cause of the problem of uh, delayed recovery with the metazola. But uh, here, because of the ester hydrolysis, the elimination of the drug uh, would be accepted, expected to be fast. And mechanical faction is similar to metazola only. Uh, rules of administration and dosing, IV, it is 5 mg over 1 minute followed by uh, necessary as necessary uh, by top up doses of 2.5 mg coming to pharmacokinetics as i already told it is a uh, esterase hydrolysis so uh, that lead, that will lead to a faster metabolism and clearance of the drug from the body it has a marginally greater potency and uh, a maximum effect compared to midazolam so it is slightly more potent. The principal metabolite of remimazolam binds with a four ten times lower affinity uh, than its parent and is considered inactive. Whereas the midazolam uh, metabolite uh, is having stronger affinity for the GABA receptor. So here uh, the clearance is fast. High first pass metabolism with consequently near zero oral bioavailability. So you, you cannot use it as a oral drug. Pharmacodynamics, it has a swifter onset and offset. That is the reason why it came into a lot of discussion and research. Uh, because midazolam was not having that profile. Otherwise, it is broadly similar to midazolam. And when you compare with the standard benchmark propofol, the onset is lower, slower compared to propofol. So it cannot beat propofol in the onset time. Uh, but the offset is somewhat similar to propofol. And uh, grossly impaired uh, improved compared to midazolam um, it is not a midazolam but it is it is a propofol in case of offset and uh, it uh, it gives a stable bp and heart rate as i already told in the initial part of the presentation hypotension is a major enemy for the anesthesiologist if you have uh, a very strong intent to improve patient outcome so in that regard if you compare with propofol uh, Remimazolam has a very stable uh, hemodynamic profile. So that is one major advantage. Side effects, lesser incidence of hypo hypotension. Respiratory depression or hypoxemia incident is somewhat similar to or slightly less than midazolam. So uh, coming to the left side of the, uh, the left, left picture. So the um, bold black line is uh, Remimazolam, whereas um this heavily dotted uh, blue lines are uh, midazolam this is uh, what to say um thin purple dashes thin purple dashes uh, this is uh, of fentanyl so you can see that um, this one that is remimazolam's uh, graph 
uh, when it is plotted with the x time on x axis and the peak effect on y axis it lies between that of propofol and uh, pentanyl so you can imagine the profile of uh, its onset with this graph so it is between this one second So it is uh, it is between uh, fentanyl and uh, uh, propofol, whereas it is uh, the midazolam lies quiet uh, towards uh, towards the right side of the graph. So uh, that is why it is not used for, as an induction agent. Coming to the right side picture, this here you can see contact sensitivity half time plotted in the y axis and uh, duration of infusion on the x axis. So this. Uh, uh, Blue, blue line is uh, uh, propofol is large red dots and uh, this is um, remi, remi fentanyl and uh, here comes the black uh, straight line uh, is that of remi masolam and uh, you can see where the midazolam graph is lying it, it you cannot find out the contact sensitivity half time for uh, midazolam so it goes and goes on um, prolonged uh, to a uh, very high values so you cannot expect the patient to come out easily after a long uh, duration of metasolar infusion. Whereas uh, finally we have found a benzodiazepine drug uh, which has some mm, similarity in the contact sensitivity half time plot uh, over time to both remi uh, remifentanil and propofol. So uh, that is the advantage of uh, remimasolum. It has a reliable um contact sensitivity half time that will not uh, get higher and higher with uh, ongoing infusions so this was one study came in 2020 in journal of anesthesia so here they have uh, they have randomized the um randomized the patients into three groups one is for the first group they gave remimasolum at 6 m mg per kg per hour Second group received 12 mg per kg per hour. And third group received a propofol, 1 mg per kg per hour. Um, sorry, uh, propofol, 2 to 2.5 mg per kg bolus dose. And uh, both groups received remi, uh, remi fentanyl at 1 mg per kg per hour after the induction phase. And here, what I found out was, so the three groups, uh, 6 mg per kg remi, Remimasolam, 12 mg per kg uh, remimasolam per hour. So remimasolam was given as an, uh, an infusion, both for the induction and uh, uh, for the maintenance. Whereas propofol group get, got propofol as a bolus uh, for induction and followed by a remifentanil uh, maintenance. So here, so here uh, what they got was uh, the remi, uh, remimasolam. Onset was 120 uh, for the 6 mg per kg, uh, 120 seconds for the 6 mg per kg group, 88 seconds for the 12 mg per kg group, whereas it was 78 seconds for propofol group. So you can compare the onset times from, the, from this. As already told, it is slightly delayed for the Remimasolam group. Mm, and they observed a less hypotension and less use of asopresis for Remimasolam. Equally less postoperative nausea vomiting and uh, 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 no awareness for the uh, for both the remi solo and propofol groups so the po in profile was almost similar but uh, during the extubation you can see that uh, remi solo group had uh, uh, an extubation timing of 15 minutes um, and 18 minutes whereas propofol had it uh, for 12 minutes and uh, the time to recovery room uh, time to discharge from the recovery room was 25 minutes for, uh, for the remimasolam group and uh, 16 uh, minutes for the propofol group. So there is, you can see, a slight uh, deviance from the propofol nature uh, in case of remimasolam. Uh, and, and they have uh, continued this study. In uh, This study was conducted in ASA 1 and 2 patients. Uh, then subsequently they continued the study in ASA 3 patients also where they uh, found excellent tolerability in compromised patients. So the special points, yet to see, 
the proceduralist and uh, the patient satisfaction with the known anesthesiologist remimazolam sedation versus that achieved by anesthesiologist provided propofol sedation so when you develop a molecule and it finds some place in the uh, main clinical scenario then the next question is whether a non specialist can uh, use that drug so that will uh, help the clinical practice in a better way. For example, if propofol was a drug which can be used by the medical gastroenterology people without any anesthetic uh, assistance, they would have given all the uh, sedation for endoscopies uh, the, themselves. So there was no need. So it, it would have reduced a lot of load on the anesthetist. Uh, uh, so in that way, uh, there has been attempts to attempts to use remimazolam by known anesthesia specialist. So uh, is that possible? Time only will tell. The possibility of uh, reduced perioperative hypotension may be the most rational reason for considering remimazolam, especially with opioid for induction and maintenance of anesthesia. And uh, uh, but one problem is uh, this was this was the major study uh, which I previously mentioned, which came in, um, which compared uh, um, remissolo in anesthesia, induction and maintenance. Um, and it has not been evaluated for induction of anesthesia, uh, uh, followed by an inhalational maintenance. In such a scenario, it is it has not been tested. In comparison with propofol, uh, the relative hemodynamic stability which we, we, ha we have seen uh, with remnant solum comes at a cost of minimally delayed loss of consciousness but materially slower recovery and another question is the benzodiazepines are not the preferred drugs in ICU practice anymore because of the uh, chance of increased uh, causation of delirium uh, so what is uh, remnant solum effect in this area that has to be seen and uh, uh, for the time being, it is not reserved for use by anesthesiologists. Um, means it can be used by other specialists also. But the problem is, uh, see, there is a lot of um, caveats in this approach because it, it is better that the whoever uses remembers only, they need better training and they, they have a good knowledge about the pharmacological profile of the drug because it is not a, a case of safety every time, uh, especially when you are using with a fentanyl, for example. They are doing some procedure in which patient has some pain. So they give some fentanyl and then they continue the mimosolum. The, the picture is different. So there can be a respiratory depression, which the uh, non-anesthesia specialist may not be able to tackle properly. So it, it's better that uh, uh, any specialist uh, needs uh, in, enough training before handling this drug, even though it is currently, uh, it is they can use it for the time being. Coming to the third drug, um, alfaxalone. So this was a neuroactive steroid. This is a neuroactive steroid. So, so I don't know how many of you know Fahad Fasil. Um, he's a Kerala actor. Uh, he has uh, come as a hero in a movie before uh, 2000s. Uh, it was a it was a very big flop. Actually, he didn't create any impact. But afterwards, uh, after a few years, uh, he came in a, a different outlook, and uh, the rest was history. So he became a major hero in uh, Mollywood industry. So like that, uh, the neuroactive steroids, uh, they were used from 1972 to uh, 1984. Uh, so it was a drug which was tried for anesthesia in such a long period. Then what happened? Where were you? So uh, neuroactive steroids are steroids with anesthetic effects. Uh, it is a steroid which has direct effects on receptor targets in the CNS and uh, it mod which modulates neuronal ex excitability also. So uh, the major compound uh, uh, which came uh, in pra practice is was and is alfaxalone. When um, it was previously uh, administered in a different uh, carrier vehicle. That time, the problem was a severe pain on injection and uh, thrombophlebitis at the injection site. See, whatever you see, uh, you see a very good uh, peri uh, anesthesia 
drug profile for the drug no hypotension uh, very easily titratable uh, that all should be okay but uh, if uh, if during the awake phase of the patient if the patient if the drug is causing any side effect it will not be uh, tolerated by the patient uh, and the commercial setup that's what i told the commercial perception and the clinical perception are different so this drug had that kind of problem it caused a lot of pain uh, and again, um, uh, to improve the stability of the molecules, uh, or improve the lipid uh, solubility, sorry, the water solubility, they uh, found uh, uh, different uh, ways of modification of the molecule. And finally, it was uh, an administered with a uh, castor oil vehicle known as cremafor EL. So this particular component of the drug was the deadly anaphylaxis that was enough to uh, withdraw it from major use so that's how it disappeared uh, in during 80s and then uh, the us fda approved a molecule called the beta cyclodextrin which is a cyclic oligosaccharide uh, for use in uh, enhancing the solubility of non water soluble compounds so when uh, this was uh, carried uh, by beta cyclodextrin uh, when alfaxalone was carried by beta cyclodextrin the profile changed um, so the vehicle was replaced by beta cyclodextrin. Now it is finding some use in anesthesia. So coming to the introduction, it's a, a neurosteroid, uh, neuroactive steroid. And uh, it is a progesterone analog without any steroid effects, devoid of progestational, est estrogenic, uh, glucocorticoid, mineralocorticoid, and thymolytic activity and is an anesthetic sedative with anti-convulsant and neuroprotective actions. So it has some more things to uh, project as advantage uh, against the existing uh, lineup. And the use, there is no approval from FDA over EMA. Uh, it is uh, an IV hypnotic, which is used in certain studies. Chemical characteristics and presentation. It is a 5-alpha and 5-alpha and 3-alpha reduced neuroactive steroid reformulated in beta cyclodexin and the brand name is Fax and CD. Uh, it was and also is in use in veterinary anesthesia. So, uh, so we had a uh, long history for uh, this particular molecule's use in the clinical field but only thing it was in veterinary anesthesia. Uh, it comes as an aqueous solution in as uh, 10 mg per ml in 30 percentage uh, uh, 7 sulfur butyl either beta cyclodextrin formulation and the mechanism of action is it is still a just like the other anesthetics anesthetics uh, it is a gaba a receptor modulator and uh, it has also actions at some other uh, receptor sites like voltage gated calcium channels so it has, uh, since it is a totally different group, you can expect uh, the mechanism of action at some extra things compared to the existing uh, drugs. Uh, group, it is an intravenous anesthetic and I already told and a sedative and route of administration and dosing. It is from my study conducted by Good Child at all. It is 0 0.55 mg per kg. Uh, pharmacokinetics, it's faster onset and uh, recovery. Uh, that is the advantage of alpha alone. Um, and pharmacodynamics, it has excellent hypnotic effect. It is somewhat like propofol, but with the less hemodynamic impact. And that definitely will arise a good perception about the drug. And uh, you can see significant birth suppression EEG. And uh, certain, oh, even if it is few, the studies have used a BIS monitor for measuring its uh, depth of anesthesia. Uh, it produced a substantial decrease in cerebral blood flow. Uh, so whether this uh, uh, crosses the line and causes a uh, physiological destability uh, is to be known. Uh, with further studies, it may come up. And uh, side effects, uh, it uh, produces transient tachycardia and uh, uh, slight hypotension in some of the studies. Uh, another advantage uh, it has to speak about is the lack of neurotoxicity in the young brain. Most of the other drugs uh, in animal studies and other uh, trials, they post, uh, at least they post a threat of uh, causing some neurotoxicity in the developing brain. But this being a steroid, it was not having any effect on the younger brain. Any deleterious effect was not there. 
special points in non-human primates, alpha alone is preferred to ketamine uh, due to its ease of emergence as well as the quality of anesthesia on muscle reflexes and vital signs. So that's about alpha alone. And this was the major study uh, which was done by um, Colin S. Goodchild. Uh, it was published in Anesthesia Analgesia in 2020. And uh, following this, uh, a, a phase three study also came up, but I could not find it in the uh, literature, means in the uh, internet. A phase three pilot study in anesthesia analgesia suggests that the favorable characteristics described in volunteers are repeated in patient care also. There they studied in actual patients. So the favorable characteristics continued there also. So it is a promising agent, alpha alone. It's a neuroactive steroid. Coming to the fourth molecule, s -ketamine. Is the S enantiomer of uh, ketamine? So, um, sorry, the picture was the previous picture. Don't look at it. Um, S ketamine, the introduction group, this is an intravenous anesthetic, S enantiomer of ketamine, and it's a sedative also. Uses, uh, FDA has approved it only for use in uh, depression. And the European Medical Agency has approved for anesthesia. Uh, and in China, NMPI has approved for perioperative sedation and analgesia. Coming to the chemical characteristics and presentation, it's an S, an enantiomer of ketamine, the same phencyclidine derivative, no changes. You can exactly tell what you would tell for ketamine. Mechanism of action, it's an antagonist of NMDA receptors. It has a four times more affinity to NMDA receptor and also has affinity for some new opioid receptors. So that may cause some change in its profile compared to ketamine. So it is more potent compared to ketamine. Uh, routes of administration and dosing, IV, 0.15 to 0.5 mg per kg. And uh, one study in, I think it's in BJ, uh, they found a ability of ability of S ketamine to reverse the opioid induced respiratory depression in certain patients between doses uh, 12 and 24 mg per hour. They gave it by infusion. And uh, when they kept it uh, 12 and 24 mg per hour, it reduced the uh, opioid fentanyl in, induced respiratory depression. So that is another property. Uh, pharmacokinetics. Rapid onset of action and rapid awakening. Uh, that is quite a difference compared to ketamine. It can be used to reduce the dose of propofol during sedation, uh, reducing the larger side effects. Exactly like uh, we use ketafol, this can be used in place of uh, ketamine in the ketafol component, ketafol uh, combo. And uh, you can expect a further better uh, pharmacodynamic profile in if you use S ketamine in place of ketamine in ketafol. So that is the advantage. And uh, uh, there is, and since it is a potent drug, uh, it, will, it will again provide excellent analysis. Yeah? More, that, more than that, what is given, uh, given by uh, ketamine. Coming to pharmacodynamics, there is significant reduction in opioid dosage because of the opposite reasons and pay, pain scores after S ketamine supplementation. But the effects did not persist after the first 24 hour. So they studied the impact in uh, pain profile after uh, in the post-operative period. And the, uh, two studies found uh, uh, the effect lasted only till first 24 hours. And it caused mild respiratory depression and uh, uh, dilated bronchi is uh, just like ketamine, it causes bronchodilatation. And it is a more potent analgesic. These are the pharmacodynamic features. Coming to side effects, in the intraoperative administration, there were no obvious airway secretions, less psychotropic uh, side effects compared to racemic ketamine, no increase in POMV. And uh, with the post operative administration, uh, actually, uh, so when you give it during the intraoperative period, uh, what I said till now was the effects. But uh, if you are continuing to uh, give uh, S ketamine in the post op period also, then you will get uh, excellent analysis. Yeah? but with more psychotropic side effects. So that was about the uh, S-ketamine. Coming to uh, the next molecule, ABP700. It's an etomidate analog, which is not a neuroactive steroid. Sorry for the mistake. Um, it, is a, it is an etomidate analog. And uh, the group introduction, 
second generation analog of atomidate developed to developed to retain atomidate's beneficial hemodynamic and respiratory profiles but diminishing its suppression of the adrenocortical axis and uh, uh, uses it it was developed for induction and maintenance of general anesthesia just like uh, atomidate chemical characteristics and presentation uh, cyclopropyl methoxy carbonyl uh, metomidate it is known as CPMM or ABP 700 or the brand name is uh, MDCO 700. It comes as 10 mg per ml and uh, with a 10 percentage sulfur butyl ether B cyclodextrin with meglutamine, meglumine, and amino sugar derived from glucose in a 20 ml USP type 1 clear glass vial. Since it's an experimental compound, not in popular use, that's why I'm detailing a little long about the preparation. Mechanics of action, just like atomidate, it is a GABA A receptor agonist. Uh, routes of administration and dosing, IV, uh, 30 to 60 microgram uh, per kg per minute. That was the dose used in a uh, few studies. Bolus doses of 0.25 mg per kg and uh, 0.35 mg per kg are found to be the most optimal doses in this 30 to 60 range for induction of anesthesia. Coming to pharmacokinetics, uh, it has a rapid onset and uh, rapid metamolism that is due to rapid hydrolysis of an ester bond and uh, uh, it has a rapid recovery from the hypnotic effect. Coming to pharmacodynamics, it has a longer duration of action with a less rapid recovery. And uh, the modified observer's assessment uh, scale of sedation uh, and uh, as patterns did not always follow the BIS profiles closely. So there was some discrepancy between the uh, clinical depth of anesthesia and was shown in the BIS monitor. So such a discrepancy was there. We will come to know about uh, the reasons behind uh, just such uh, uh, scenes uh, in the future only. Side effects. Adrenocortical responsiveness was not significantly different from that after propofol infusion. That's a great thing. Like uh, you can administer an atomidate analog just like propofol uh, in, uh, with view to the uh, adrenocortical suppression profile. So, stimulation with the ACTH in such patients, it caused a physiological cortical, cortisol response thereafter. So, it didn't cause any adrenocortical suppression. So, finally, they are able to produce, uh, they, there come a lot of atomidate analog. Uh, many of them did not have uh, adrenocortical suppression, but actually, because of other issues, they failed in the market. Uh, so, now they came up uh, with a compound uh, which is reasonably good. Uh, in uh, 360 degree. Dose-related involuntary muscle movement, that is again there. Uh, I, it, it was not of high incidence, but uh, it, it was still there in a certain uh, proportion of the patients. So, in their involuntary muscle movements is a disturbing uh, problem. It continues with the ABP 700 also, and uh, the treatment is metasolum. And during this uh, periods of uh, involuntary muscle movement, there came a tachycardia and tachypnea also. Uh, so they are also uh, can they can also be labeled as other side effects. Uh, one problem with this is uh, if you are using this for sedation or something, this involuntary muscle movements can cause airway obstruction in a vulnerable patient who has OSIS or uh, a very collapsible uh, upper airway. In such patients, this can cause um, airway obstruction. And severe hypertension or severe respiratory depression was not seen. And uh, here the very interesting point uh, which we all should know is that atomidase, you know, uh, if you ask, if somebody asks you the its prime uh, effect, it is actually an adrenocortical suppressant. The anesthesia is a secondary feature only. So, uh, it's such a drunk uh, uh, provided lots of hemodynamic uh, stability in, in compromised patients. That was the reason why such a drug with uh, such bad effects uh, is still persisting in uh, anesthesia practice. But its major effect is adenocortical suppression and uh, hypnosis is a secondary trait. So, it is a uh, multi-effect combo. It, it can be viewed as a, a toxin plus a very life-saving drug in uh, anesthesia practice.
so uh, these are the group uh, the walk at all they studied the uh, safety and clinical effect of iv infusion of abp 700 a soft analog of etomidate in healthy uh, subjects soft drugs are the current uh, passion among anesthesia researchers they are trying to produce uh, anesthesia drug which has a rapid onset uh, and a rapid offset uh, because of uh, some mechanism like uh, rapid metabolism by esterase etc uh, so uh, soft drug development is the uh, booming thing in anesthesia nowadays and uh, so from this discussion uh, you can see that uh, proper assignment of roles for each drug is very important some drug will be good for administration before volatile maintenance some drug will not be good at all in uh, use uh, during anesthesia induction and maintenance, whereas it has a very good profile in, uh, in the ICU. So you have to select and uh, even during the trial phase, you have to uh, design your trials accordingly. A drug uh, which is obviously not suited for induction uh, or maintenance, uh, why to try such a drug for uh, in upcoming trials uh, for the same thing? instead you try those drugs in uh, in the uh, for icu use so the proper assignment of roles uh, is uh, a definite requirement uh, uh, while drug research and for and during uh, clinical practice and if you mention about the other drugs the saber bpvacaine uh, and htx011 um, sucrose acetate isobutyrate extended release bpvacaine that is saber bpvacaine a biodegradable depot drug it has the capacity to hold a high concentration of bupivacaine up to 660 mg but it contains benzyl alcohol and cannot be used for perineural use this neurotoxic coming to htx 11 this is a biodegradable polymer mixture of uh, bupivacaine and meloxicam it has been uh, investigated as a means of delivering uh, long-lasting infiltrative pain relief after hernia and minion surgery Phase three, phase 3 infiltration studies show better pain relief compared to bupivacaine and extended time to first analgesic rescue. And trials of HTX011 uh, for nerve blocks are awaited. So it can be used for nerve blocks. So studies are awaited. Quaternary lidocaine, uh, QLD plus vaniloids. So quaternary uh, lidocaine is a charged molecule that cannot pass through lipid barriers. The primary afferent nociceptive neurons have uh, something known as transient receptor potential, TRP ion channels. TRP channels are activated by the vaniloid capsaicin. So this channel has to be opened for this QLD to enter the cell uh, or enter the neuron. So somebody has to open the channel. So this can be uh, opened by uh, the vaniloid capsaicin. Thus, providing an aqueous route for the entry and winding of QLD to the voltage gated sodium channel. So, you have to give vaniloid along with the drug. Uh, but the problem is the use of capsaicin is limited by painful rotation. So, I don't know how this uh, studies about QLD will come up. Animal studies, it has shown prolonged analgesia with less motor block than equivalent doses of lidocaine. And another interesting thing is uh, the reversal of local anesthesia. Uh, especially in dental practice. Uh, persistent numbness, drooling, and the inability to eat after local anesthesia for dental surgery are unpleasant. So, phentolamine mesylator is a non selective alpha adrenergic antagonist that causes vasodilatation. So, when you vasodilate, the uh, drug will get washed out. So, this increases the blood flow and is reported to have the reversal time of local anesthesia. So, that's all about. Uh, uh, newer drugs um, and there is a lot of materials in the internet to read about uh, i recommend uh, you search in the google scholar or google with the search word like uh, uh, the particular group or when 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 you search the particular group name or drug name uh, bj like uh, uh, neuroactive steroid bj then you will get a, a better article. Uh, the BJ and other high quality journal articles give you a lot of um, lateral thinking uh, opportunities. So such uh, uh, journals should be uh, preferred uh, compared to some other uh, review articles, uh, which has 
which are quoting data based on uh, lower quality evidence. So that's my recommendation. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, really, a uh, very difficult topic. Uh, you've uh, dealt it so nicely. And uh, you have uh, kept uh, what is to why you know, your presentation in focus, what is needed and what uh, what has been developed. Uh, one question from Edward, sir, is that uh, whether this uh, phylloxone will uh, can be can be used in uh, uh, diabetics because it's a steroid molecule. I, I think uh, um, with extensive search also, it will be difficult to find uh, uh, specific cancer, specific cancers uh, about uh, uh, giving such drugs in uh, sub scenarios uh, because the studies are in its initial phase only. So we will not find, uh, they have just uh, uh, stepped up from the animal studies to the human studies. So whenever they, and mostly they will be using in ASA 1 and 2 patients. Uh, so a significant, significant proportion of diabetics monitor to have come in their study groups. So such uh, like subgroup that uh, you may, we may get after quite some time only. I think so. So I, I could not find out any uh, data regarding um, use of alpha alone in diabetics. Can I give the answer of this question to Edward? <laughs> Yeah, Edward, uh, actually what happens even if you use steroid itself, like dexamethasone or any type of hydrocortisone. So there are studies, extensive studies done in the anesthesia, during anesthesia, pan-anesthesia period, that if the basic blood sugar is around 110 in the morning, FBF, FBS period in the patient, then if you give the 8 milligram or 100 milligram of steroids of hydrocortisone or dexamethasone, it increases only 12 milligram to 16 milligram of the uh, sugar level in that patients by only drugs only. So one dose cannot give any uh, problem with the giving this uh, anesthetized patient, whether it is a steroid itself or steroids like the anesthesia induction agents. So particularly in my scenario, when I'm doing any sort of anesthesia practice, I usually give six to eight milligram patients, even diabetic patient, because if their sugar level in the morning level is under control, then there is no need because there are a lot of advantages of giving steroids rather than not to give steroids. So I mean, that school thought that okay, whether we should give or not, it is not a problem, but when there is a higher uh, advantages to give, no doubt, continuous anesthesia with the another drug, if it is increasing, then we cannot give. But stress of the anesthesia, surgical stress may increase the blood sugar level. So we have to monitor during the operative period also. So that is the way I usually give in my all patients. Okay, sir. You are routinely using uh, steroid during induction, 8 milligram. So in our department, we are conducting a study whether the 8 milligram uh, uh, dexamethasone given at the induction in non-diabetic patients, how much the blood sugar yes. increased in the course yeah, of yes, sir, That's a good, a good, good experiment. Yes, sir. Some, we have to study it, sir. Otherwise, uh, there are varying thoughts whether to give it or not give it. And it's mainly uh, because of the concern about the post-operative hyperglycemia. Only if we study, we'll know it, sir. When, you, when it's done, please let us know, sir. Yeah. And uh, only question, sir, as you said, uh, China is coming with a lot of yeah. uh, research and molecules. I think recently I read about another drug like uh, Sugamadex. Uh, they have developed it and they have tested it and it's almost out of phase three trial also, sir, for reversal of uh, all steroid uh, uh, neuromuscular blockers. Uh, it's Adam and, uh, Gamadex. It is called uh, yes, sir, Adam, Adam Gamadex. Adam Gamadex, yes, sir. Yes. Adam Gamadex, yes, sir. <laughs> And uh, I think uh, they are more into more uh, drug research and yeah. bringing out drugs. Chinese people are coming a lot of drugs in the invention. Even they are yes, coming sir. with a lot of gadgets also. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, they are uh, publishing in uh, journals like JAMA. Uh, see, yeah. actually JAMA and all require around 2.5 lakhs to 3 lakhs publication charge. Uh, so uh, when uh, you get that and... Uh, uh, you find that the study reasonably good and then they may be expe accepting the article. I think so. That's why, uh, and if you uh, deeply dug into, uh, dig into the article, you can see a lot of uh, pitfalls in the study design and all <laughs> such as the Chinese articles. <laughs> but still they are finding entry into all the major journals. True, sir. 
But anyway, today it was a very nice, uh, refreshing topic, sir. Uh, and true to this uh, update, uh, we had uh, all new innovative things uh, hearing this for the past two hours, sir. Thank you, Tushar, sir. And thank you, Unikrishan, sir. Thank you, uh, Thank you, all viewers. Have a good Sunday. Thank, thank you, you much, sir. Super thank you, sir. Coordination. And thank, thank you, Unikrishan, sir. It is a wonderful, complete presentation with a lot of information. It will be more useful to the postgraduates. Uh, please share your slides. Then I can share it to the post. Yeah, yeah, definitely I will share. Uh, thank, thank you, Trisha, for your mind blowing thank presentations. You. Today we have very good presentation by, by both speakers, uh, Vuni Krishnan and uh, Trisha. I thank the, the speakers yeah. and also the sponsor, Akrula, and uh, the uh, co host that is Anastasia TV and A1 Logics. Thank you. Thank you, Ananda. We will meet next yeah. week with Animal. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, sir.